Beloved, I greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our service today includes an act of remembrance, uh, which is in our archives from November of 1919. So as honorary padre for the veterans of the Battle of Hong Kong and their children and families, I wish you all a good week of remembrance. Let us pray. O oh, let the nations rejoice and be glad, for thou shalt judge the folk righteously, and govern the nations upon earth. Strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, 
We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, our and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save us, O oh Lord, make haste. 
The first lesson is written in the first chapter of the first letter of Peter, beginning to read at the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that though perishable is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor through Jesus Christ is when Jesus Christ is revealed although you have not seen him you love him and even though you have not seen him now you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy for you are receiving the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Here ends the first lesson.
The second lesson is written in the 11th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning to read at the 21st verse. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Here ends the second lesson.
This wreath will be laid in memory of the veterans of St. Luke's Church, in particular the Winnipeg Grenadiers and those who are veterans of the Battle of Hong Kong. This wreath is laid by the folks and the parishioners of the parish church of St. Luke's.
Welcome to the Honorary Assistance Office here at the Parish Church of St. Luke. This is a relatively safe space, so we can deliver the sermon without being masked, which hopefully will allow people to hear it more easily. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and meditations of all our hearts be accepted on thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Michael Ignatieff, in his book, True Patriot Love, notes, Loving a country is an act of imagination. We start from what we know. We have to imagine the ties that bind us to our fellow citizens, many of whom may not even speak the same language. We reason out from the rituals we share, the rights we enjoy, the traditions we hold in common and we imagine belonging to a place we can call home. Our political system, the leaders, the laws, the symbols and anthems matter to us because when they work as they should, they give us the feeling that we share in a life in common with the strangers we call fellow citizens. We need a public life in common some set of reference points and allegiances to give us a way to relate to strangers among whom we live. Without this feeling of belonging, even if only imagined, we would live in fear and dread of each other, whom we call stranger. When we call the strangers citizens, we can feel at home with them and with ourselves. This makes for a definition of Remembrance Day, Remembrance Sunday, for this day helps to define our life together as a nation. We may not agree on what the political landscape should look like, but this day seems to hold us together. It was in 1918, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, the armistice was signed, which ended the war to end all wars. Since that day so long ago, we have taken pause to remember the war to end all wars, to remember those who died and those who returned home. Historians argue that Canada during World War I came of age as a nation. That war defined our ethos as a young nation. Thus, it has become fitting that we have a day of remembrance. However, since that time, this day of remembrance has had to expand to remember those of other wars who died in service of our of country. This includes World War II, the Korean War, our peacekeeping missions, and Afghanistan. As Michael Ignatieff notes, we need these traditions to define who we are as a nation, and these traditions give us some common reference points. They bind us together. Yet in our remembering, I pray that we do not glorify war. War is a failure of the act of politics to work for the common good. War is a failure of human beings being all too human in their acts. War is the result of pride and ego. The political leaders who make decisions are not the ones who enact them and not the ones who see the horrors of war. In 2009, the last British World War I veteran died at the age of 101. He commented that World War I was not worth one of the lives lost. And after his 100th birthday, he spoke out against war, a voice from the past, from the wilderness. And may we heed this cry of this old man in the twilight of his life. In fact, his military funeral involved folks from all sides, of that war, not just the Allies. Legion magazine, some time ago, ran an article about finding the names of lost war dead. And Legion magazine notes, Canada has some 30,000 soldiers with no known graves, including more than 19,600 from the First World War and another 8,000 from the Second World War. About one-third of the casualties from World War I were never recovered. Those are sobering numbers. In our own day, we have watched ramp ceremonies, 
or young Canadian soldiers are returned home and what we call repatriation ceremonies. These are moving services as our troops are sent home to family and flag-draped coffins, different from early years, for it is immediate with 24-hour news networks. And yet, and yet, we do not hear of other war dead, the ones who have no ramp ceremonies, ones who are sent home of the cloak of darkness. I am thinking of the other victims of war, the ones who were so damaged that they died of suicide and other horrible events. A friend of mine, now gone, who grew up in London during World War II, notes just hearing an air raid siren years after the war ended still brings tears to his eyes. And yes, he remembers being in London with his father, looking at the war damage during the Blitz and how terribly moved he was by the devastation. After Senator Kennedy, Ted Kennedy died, an aide to the senator, senator recounted this story. The aide and the senator were walking along a street in Washington, D.C., and a car backfired. The aide, looking, could not see the senator. Senator Kennedy had hit the deck, a response to two brothers being killed by gunfire. While serving in Reston, one of my parishioners, Alvin Burney, prior to his death, would often talk to me about his brother, Gregor, who was killed overseas in World War II. Alvin more than once noted, when news came of his brother's death, his mother was never the same again. There was no funeral. There was no ramp ceremony. There is just a grave in, in France. Weeks later, a letter from Gregor arrived, it was written August the 4th, 1944, two days before his death. The letter concludes, Hope it won't be long till we manage to meet again. It is near three years now, isn't it? So write soon again. I will try to do likewise. Best of luck to you. As ever, love, Brother Gregor. Those were his last letter, his last words that were sent home. These are the images that shape a nation and define while we gather on Remembrance Sunday. And we gather to remember. As we remember, maybe we can look to a time when we can live together in peace and harmony or there'll be no need for war and these type of days. In the meanwhile, what are we to do? What are we to do as followers of Jesus? We are to work for peace. We are work to work for ways to be in peace and harmony. We are to ask God for direction, placing God at the center of all that we do. We are called to speak hope in the midst of despair. That hope is rooted in the promise that God in Christ has conquered death. It is a hope that God is present even with us, even in the darkest valleys of our lives and of our world. Throughout the biblical record, there are many accounts of God being present. Over the years, the account of Jesus stilling the waters has resonated with me on Remembrance Sunday. This account is found in each of the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Luke, in some form of iteration. It is a profound story because we hear of the disciples who are on a trip that was not of their own making, but is done at Jesus' command. The disciples are not alone. The disciples are not alone, yet they act as if they are alone. The world around them is in the midst of a huge storm. There are great winds, waves, and rising water. Through most of the accounts, Jesus is asleep. Our disciples are caught in this storm. They are scared. And who would not be scared in such a storm? And so Jesus asks, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Jesus knows that fear can wipe our faith. 
Jesus knows that fear can wipe out our faith and encourages his disciples to have faith, to place their faith in God and to believe. During the storm, Jesus is at peace. He has faith in God and believes that God will lead him safely to the shore. This is a miracle story, and it is intended to rescue the disciples from both fear and despair. The church and the world is still living in stormy times, times that are full of chaos and confusion. This is especially true this Remembrance Sunday with the impact of COVID-19. Yet these forces of chaos are no match for the reign of Christ. If we place our trust in Christ, the storms will be calmed. And this, he leads us to new peace. He leads us to new life. And before the storms of war subside, he gives us the ability to cope. Likewise, our reading from the first letter of Peter reminds us that our faith may very well be tested, but in the midst of trial, Jesus is still present. As hard as it is to fathom, Jesus with those who fought in wars long ago as well. Jesus in the midst, is in the midst of our testing, which has been this time of pandemic. And he is not only with us, he is also helping to still the waters of chaos. There is hope in the world. When we trust and place faith in Jesus, we realize this when we live out the prediction of the Old Testament prophet. It was Isaiah who would write, They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. On this Remembrance Sunday, the day that defines our collective life together, may our remembrances help lead us away from the path of war to the path of peace and harmony, and may our remembrances help still the waters And may the hope we have in Jesus continue to calm the chaos that surrounds us. Amen.
forth, we pray thee, thy almighty arm, to strengthen and protect the men and women of the Canadian forces in every peril of sea and land and air. Shelter them in the day of battle and ever keep them safe from all evil. Endure them with loyalty and courage and grant that in all things they may serve as seeing thee who art invisible through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty oh God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle we pray thee in the hearts of all people the true love of peace, and guide with thy pure and peaceful wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility thy kingdom may go forward, till the earth is filled with the knowledge of thy love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, the parliaments of the Commonwealth, and all who are set in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom, righteousness, and peace, to the honor of thy holy name, and the good of thy church and people, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the Creator and Preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of people, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy safe and health unto all nations. More especially we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, especially those on our prayer list, that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we have an early service to give thee the most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thy inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of praise and for all of the glory. And we beseech thee, you give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfailingly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Almighty God, who has given us grace to this arm of one of our Lord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and thou hast promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, that it may be most exceeding for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, thy everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.
just like to express my love and best wishes uh, and greetings to the cadets of the Winnipeg Grenadiers who usually join us for this Sunday, as well as the veterans of the Battle of Hong Kong and their children, the Hong Kong Veterans Commemorative Association. And to all of our families here at St. Luke's who have lost uh, loved ones over the past year, uh, you have my love and very best wishes. So this is a time of remembrance and, and to give thanks for the love uh, that we have shared. And grief is really the, the price of, of love. So my love and best wishes to you. 